bigger picture, had that been Barcelona today and had Barcelona with Rafinha and Lamal and Lewandowski and the pace they've got in the front, they would have taken that back four apart. Mm. But it was Batiste, and so they could make those mistakes and they could get away with it. And so there's just a lot of, a lot of work for Ancelotti to do with, with this side. I think a lot more than even, even he thought at the start of the season. You know, I think, I think the toughest job Ancelotti's got is figuring out how to get the chemistry right, particularly with the front three. Mm -hmm. We saw more of the connection, though, today, didn't we, with Vinny and Mbappe? Well, there, were, the there was... They tried, to, they tried to connect a lot more today than they have done. And, and the fact that it's only been four games uh, and the fact that they've not quite got up to speed with each other, uh, you know, the, the final pass wasn't quite the right pace, particularly the one you saw Vinny try to put Mbappe in, just a little bit heavy. All of these little things, once they figure them out... Then we'll see the juggernaut that we're expecting. But until then, the only important thing is to win and keep yourself at the right place in the table until, until such times as the chemistry, chemistry does start working. Because it certainly isn't yet. You talked about all the areas, Craig, where they kind of need to improve. Midfield is something that Luis actually mentioned in the pregame show. Luis, I wonder what you thought about, one, the pass from Fede Valverde, and then beyond that, what the Real Madrid midfield was able to do, especially in that second half, to maybe open things up. Well, it was a period where uh, they couldn't handle the midfield of uh, of Real Betis, who were dominating, controlling. We mentioned before in the pre-show that this Real Betis is built to to have the ball, the possession. They they got patient to to have the ball, and Real Madrid struggled at some points. First of all, to regain it, to put pressure on it, and then to make the transition because we saw in the in the first 45, and then a little bit in the second, how Real Madrid, in the, as soon as they regained the ball, they tried to bring it as soon uh, as quick as possible to Mbappe and Vinicius Juniors. But I think that today was better. I think that uh, Valverde grew himself. He made himself bigger because Ceballos, we saw him a little bit when the, the, the possession of the team, uh, it was a little bit more more um, uh, for Real Madrid. So he was involved a little bit, but not as much as I thought that he would be. He's a quality player. And it was Valverde, the one who I think today stood up and started asking the ball also in transition in attack, but also in defense. We saw him tracking back a couple of times and his physical presence, he was very important. So I mean, he was quiet, but he was in the right position. But again, I totally agree with Craig. This is a team that um, needs to, to, to increase the, 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 the intensity and you play against Betis, they don't have even a center forward. They have to play with the Rui Bal, that is a player who has played as a fullback, as a winger, as every single position on the field, but he's not a striker. If you play against a team that is going to be a more threat, that is going to be more dangerous, you're going to have to be in trouble. Today in the second half, I like it more uh, Real Madrid in the middle of the park. But again, is that the answer or we have to wait to see if the pieces of Jude Bellingham is going to be uh, good enough to continue construction the, the future Real Madrid? Because he's got Bellingham to come back and that's a... I'm not going to call it a headache. I was going to say, you're going to call it a problem? <sighs> no. Well, it's not a problem. But it, it, it's, a, it's a problem finding where he's going to be as good as last season in terms of what position. I might suggest the problem with him now is that he's not there. Yeah, but even in, when he played in the, the first match of the season, he was frustrated. He was frustrated playing for England at the Euros because he was chasing back a lot. He was chasing back a lot in the game against Mallorca because he was playing on the left of a three. Last year, he played more as a number 10 and you had Rodrigo and Vinicius. That, that sort of dyna dynamic has changed. So, yeah, I mean, these are good problems to have, but it's still finding... It's just, you've got a bunch of superstars and they've got to find a way to make the team balance right when they're all in it.